Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, my first floss tube video. I am Shannon from Shannon Christine Designs. I am a cross stitch designer but also a stitcher. Cross stitching is my main hobby but I do dabble in other crafts such as English paper piecing and beadwork. This channel will mostly be dedicated to my cross stitch projects both personal and business, but there may be a video or two showcasing other crafts I'm working on. This video has two work in progresses I'm currently working on, a design release sneak peek, talk about the current 2022 Christmas Club, and some summer models that were stitched by my dad. Let's jump into it! So the first project I'm working on is a Kiss for a Snowman by Dimensions. He's really cute. I've seen it multiple times and I've wanted to stitch it, but I never got around to it. And then I finally ordered the kit. Here's the stitching. So the kit originally came with 16 count Ada cloth, but I like to swap out my fabric for 32 count Belfast. I find that Dimensions kits don't give you enough fabric for finishing, but I'm really enjoying stitching it. It's actually going really fast because a lot of it's half stitch, like in the snow area or in the sky. And he's really cute. I'm still deciding if I want to use the French knots or if I want to add some beads to it after. But I'm really enjoying this project. This is about three or four days stitching on it. I haven't picked it up for a few weeks but I think I'll be stitching on it next weekend. The next project is my design. It's called Summer Goodies. We started it as a start along in my Facebook group, which is Shannon Christine Designs, on May 21st. And a lot of people are stitching it on different colored fabrics and it's really stunning on black. Honestly, I wish I had done it on black. Um, since my dad is also stitching this design, I've decided that I'm going to make it more of a bell pull. So I've got all this extra fabric. I can't show you right now. but. I'm doing the middle part and the far right part, I think it is, one on top of each other. So my dad's doing the full design and I'm doing a different finishing idea for it. But it's really yummy. I think this one's my favorite. It uses all the colors except for the purple in the design, but it's really, it's stitching very nicely. And you got the little sundaes and the little fudgesicle and creamsicle. But this pattern can be found on my website, and it's not too late to join in on in on our start along. There's a subgroup on my in my Facebook group for this design alone. Um, it's really fun. It's very colorful, and people are stitching on all sorts of colors. Uh, someone's stitching it on like a bluish teal color. Uh, someone's stitching on navy, which I never even thought to, but it looks great on the navy. Um, but yeah, so join the Facebook group and uh, join in on the fun. There will be other start-alongs in the future and some uh, some group chat rooms and everything for starting and stitching together. Now, the next one is a sneak peek for a brand new design. It will be released in July. I'm currently stitching it right now so we can um, get some good photos for it for the products. Um, I am working a little ahead for winter, but I think you guys are going to like it. So this is a sneak peek. It's obviously not finished. The design's finished, but the stitching's not. It's got some cute little peppermints. And it says hot cocoa. And one price, one hug. It's Black's hard to work on, I'm not going to lie, but it's so worth it in the end. As I said, stitching on black is hard, but I have found having a light on my lap while I'm stitching on it, I can see the holes better and it's actually coming along really quickly. There will be other chalkboard designs I've got in the works right now to go along with the hot cocoa. Um, they'll probably be released every two months. Because I do plan on stitching them all so I can show them off in my videos. But yeah, it's, it's coming along. And I'm really happy with it. But I love, the, I love doing um, lettering in my designs. I think they give it an extra um, 
whimsical feel with the squir the swirls. <laughs> and obviously you got teal in it. That's my favorite color. And I find that it adds a lot to a design. But yeah, so keep an eye out for this design in July. Well, you're waiting for that one to be released, though. This is a design that's already on my website from a few years ago, I think. Hot Cocoa. This one's stitched on light mocha, I think, 18 count. My dad actually model stitched this one. Um, he's been model stitching a lot of designs for me in the past two years. Oh, yeah. It's got a cute little mug. There is back stitching in it, but the back stitching is meant for um, extra details. And I think back stitching does add a lot to a design. I try not to use too many quarter stitches or back stitching unless it's absolutely needed for a design. But I do like the bright colors and the little chocolate. This design would look gorgeous on black. I've seen it stitched on black and it's um pretty stunning. I think she ended up putting it on top of a little box with the hinges that you open up and there's a bunch of hot cocoa pockets and all that inside. It looks pretty on this fabric too, but it, it's funny how different fabrics can give different um, effects and feeling to the cross stitch. It all depends on what kind of mood you want. But those are little marshmallows by the way and little chocolate um, pieces. Yeah. I really love the chalkboard look though. It's um, it's fun. And as I said, I love doing the typography type uh, designs because you can get very artistic and um, creative with them. Swirls and backstitch. So with this old-fashioned design, I'm also going to include a small ornament size pattern to go with it. Um, it'll be in the same type of chalkboard style, but it's going to be a bit more simplistic and a bit more... Um, it, it'll be related to the hot cocoa. So you can have this plus a little um, ornament or pillow to put into a tear jar. Not a tear jar. Tear tray. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this design, I'm absolutely loving stitching it. It goes by pretty quickly because of all the white, but I like to balance out all the white with some shading in my colors. These are all DMC. Uh, the little peppermints have a little bit of back stitching in them, but I just love the colors with it. It's going to have a little blue mug right here with a little candy cane and a a cinnamon stick sticking out. But yeah. I'm definitely going to be stitching more on black after this. Once you find your groove with black, it's really easy to keep going with it. Because um, once you have an X done or a couple X's, it's a lot easier to determine if like you've um, gone over one too many threads. Did I mention this is 32 count black? Belfast? I don't think I did. But you can stitch it on Ada cloth because it won't really matter. I just prefer linen. That's basically funny story about linen. Uh, when I was younger, I think I was about eight when I learned how to cross stitch. Um, my mom's been cross stitching my entire life. One of the earliest childhood memories I have of her stitching. Um, she's always stitched on 32 count. And I was taught how to stitch on Ada cloth. And I didn't want that. <laughs> I wanted to stitch on what she was stitching. So the one weekend, uh, the one weekend uh, she had off and uh, we were stitching, I demanded that she teach me how to uh, stitch on linen. <laughs> she had to drop everything and start me on, it was a Barbara Batts uh, flower fairy design. I still have it. 
I have not finished it. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere, maybe I'll pull it out one day to show you my oldest uh, work in progress. I probably won't finish it because the stitching's not um, even or uh, I miscounted some places and uh, uh, or I stitched over too many threads but it is funny to look back at that because uh, I, I, I wanted to stitch what my mom was stitching on and ev ever since then I, I'll i stitch a little bit on Ada cloth but I much prefer the finished look of linen because um, it, it just looks more like a canvas at that point. Uh, the certain designs do call for Ada cloth and it does look good on Ada, don't get me wrong, but I enjoy stitching more on the linen. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is still awkward. <laughs> um, but yeah. Whoop. So the other designs I'm thinking of for the series are um, skate rentals and sleigh rides. And I might do something more seasonal with them too. Do some autumn ones and some spring ones. But we'll see. New ideas might strike me as I'm designing them. And I, I, I'm kind of a, a hyper focus. <laughs> if an idea comes into my head, I have to do it. Uh, that's why I have a lot of work in progresses and not a lot of finishes. But with this one, it will be done. I've set myself a time frame for it and I will finish it and they'll take photos of it for display purposes and uh, for the cover of the charts but yeah and if you really wanted to with this design if you wanted to have it in an actual cafe or coffee shop you can take out the one hug and just color color it in with the light uh, teal color and then you can put it into a frame with glass and then you can put um, the price with the a uh, dry erase marker or sharpie or something over top. But, yeah. But I am definitely making a hot cocoa bar this sum not this summer, this is Christmas. I'm in Christmas mode right now. I, I think Christmas is my favorite subject to design for. Um, j just because it it's homey. It's, uh, yeah, it's just homey. <laughs> and you can get away with a bit more uh, with those designs. And I keep my threads long because I'm going to continue using it. That was just the stopping point. So this next design, I stitched it uh, about two years ago. It's my rainbow mandala. So it's got beads. And I really like how I did the shading in this one. So the colors kind of meld in together because I heathered them. So that means there's a checker for the dark color and then in between the checker the lighter colors go in. And you get this really gorgeous um, variegated. But it's not variegated threads, it's all DMC. That's all DMC. It's probably one of my favorite patterns I designed. I just love the effect of it. And there are, there is one other mandala, rainbow mandala. And then there's two full versions of the mandalas. So instead of having the cropped, you have the full mandala. But yeah, it's, again, this one's on my website. And it needs to get ironed. I will be framing this one soon. I'm thinking just a simple uh, white frame. Maybe a mat, but I don't think so. Maybe a neutral frame, actually, now that I think of it. But yeah, it's a gorgeous design. And it was a lot of fun stitching it. It actually stitched it pretty quickly. So these next designs, I'll show them individually. Um, you've got, oh, I don't need that. 
So this is Strawberry Patchwork. There you go. Uh, Strawberry Patchwork. Again, you have the little Sunday. And you got teal with pink and it's a very summery design. I tried to make it look kind of like a quilt, like a patchwork quilt with applique. So the strawberries are polka dot. And to go along with that one, I also designed the sunflower patchwork, which also uses the same blues. But again, the that's kind of like an applique. Isn't that focusing? My dad stitched those on 18 count. I think that's a it's a gray, dove gray maybe. I'll have to double check. But they're both the same size. Um they're very cute little finishes. The next ones, my dad also stitched. This was actually his very first model that he stitched for me. This is Happy Camper. Bright colors. He stitched it on an 18 count oatmeal. We got the Happy Camper. Happy tent. Got a little backpack here. And then you got the happy canoe with a little sleeping bag. Uh, these three can be stitched together as a series. Uh, the framework has some flowers that go up and separate them a bit. Um, the framework can be found on my website under downloads yeah it's a free download it um, tells you where to put the designs in correlation with the frame and there are a couple other framework places too on there uh, one for Rose Farm Garden and I think the it's a Christmas one um, home for the holidays I think it is those designs are really popular too. They're kind of chalkboardy in a way. I don't know if I mentioned on summer goodies if um, I'm stitching mine on vintage country mocha. And again, you got the long threads. Um, it is. I I enjoy stitching this one, and I will be getting back to it very soon. It does make me crave ice cream though. <laughs> um, yeah, the colors are very yummy. And as I said, I like bright colors, especially for summer. And again, I wish I stitched it on black. But the Vintage Country Mocha gives it a different look and feel as opposed to on a black. I think my dad's stitching his on Dirty uh, by Zweigart. So for the 2022 Christmas Club, each you get two parts per month. So the theme this year is the 12 Days of Christmas. Um, the first two ornaments, um, two turtle doves and the partridge in the pear tree, have already been sent out to those who have subscribed. Um, I have put up the first two on the website at a discounted price because the signups were very short. Um, so those of you who are signing up to the subscription now, please make sure you get the first set. Um, you have to go and buy that yourself. Your subscription will start on July 1st if you signed up in June. If you sign up in July, then your subscription starts in August. And each set will be available on the website after, um, on the same day. So if you only want to stitch one or two of the ornaments, you don't have to subscribe to the full 
thing. Um, there's a lot of people who are stitching them all together as a sampler. There's a lot of people who are stitching them individually. Um, different colors of fabric are being used. Someone's stitching them on black. I love black now. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it, it, every design in that subscription, it, they, they're great standalone pieces. You don't even have to put the numbers in them if you don't want to. The whole idea of my Christmas clubs are to um, have a set of ornaments ready to go by Christmas. Um, this is my third year doing it. They all use DMC floss, a couple beads, and some Krynik. Um, this year there are no quarter stitches in the designs, and I don't think there are in the previous years either. Um, but they do use a sprinkling of beads. You don't have to do the beads. Um, it, it uses Krynik, but again, you don't have to use the Krynik. You can use whatever materials you want. And, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> I will be stitching some of them. Um, I will probably be putting an S in the seven swan swimming because I really like that one. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're, they were a joy to design and I hope they bring joy to you while you stitch them. As I said, it's not too late to sign up. If you miss the sign off, the cutoff date, you can buy the first set and start with your designs coming to you on July 1st. Um, the designs are sent on the first of every month. So July 1st, August 1st, um, September 1st, October 1st, and November 1st. Um, if you pay on the 13th, your payment comes out on the 13th, but again, you will not get your pattern until um, the first of the month. And as I said, it's um, it's to keep things fair, it's to keep everyone being able to stitch at the same time. Um, some people are doing it as a stitch along, some people are doing it um, as a, uh, they're, they're stitching with a friend. So, it, it, I, people love them. Uh, people love the subscriptions because it, it makes, it gives you two small designs that you can stitch in a month. So I try and make them weekend stitches. So you can stitch one of the designs on the first weekend of the month and then you can stitch the second design on the third weekend of the month. And it's to help you build up your um, uh, ornaments so you have gifts or you have stuff to decorate your house with at come Christmas time. Um, the, the previous subscriptions and all that, the patterns are available on the website under the Christmas section. Um, they are $10 each after the subscription's over. It's $8 to sign up. Um, but after the month, after um, the first of every month and the designs that are that month go on the website and they're $10. The only reason why the, the set is $8 right now online is because of the late sign up. There was a short sign up window. So I've kept them up as $8 for um until June 14th. So yeah, <laughs> I hope uh, you guys can join and you can join in on the fun. Um, yeah, tell your friends, get your friends involved. Uh, they're really pretty and you can change colors too. You don't have to stitch the teal and the purple and the pink. You, you can pick like red, green and navy blue or um, pick like a bunch of blues or something for the ornaments and the pattern. They, they don't have to always be my colors. You can personalize them and you can make them your own. I'm all, I like seeing other people's interpretations of my designs. Um, it, it makes me think of different ideas. It's, uh, oh, I like that color. <laughs> oh, I never thought of using that color. So do what you're comfortable with. And yeah. <laughs> Since I work on 32 count mostly, I don't like giving fabric suggestions for my patterns because I find it's pretty limiting. Um, I do try and give a color suggestion with my backgrounds, but a lot of people get intimidated by working on linen and it they might decide that, oh, that project looks too difficult because it's done on linen and I have to do it on linen. Um, I'm a believer in that you can stitch on whatever count, whatever fabric you want. I don't like limiting people in their choices. And, um, so I often get emails asking me, what color did you stitch this on? And, uh, it's, it's a photo mock-up mostly on my website. 
Um, so I do try and give some suggestions, but again, not every color comes in every count. Um, some colors come in 32 count, but they don't come in 14 count or 28 count. Um, I am all for people stitching what they want to stitch on, and I don't want to limit you. <laughs> um, I do chart mostly in DMC because it's easy to uh, it's easy accessible. It's cheaper than over dyed threads, and um, with the shading, it's hard. With the shading in my patterns, it's hard to find um, uh, consistent dye lots with the over dyed floss, and I don't. I like the subtle shade from like the dark to the light. Um, a lot of people will notice that I use three or four shades of color per color in the chart. Um, that's because I like giving it dimension. I don't like it being flat. And it makes a chart a lot more enjoyable to stitch, I think, because you see it come to life on the fabric. Um, yeah. <laughs> so stitch on whatever stitch count you want. It, whatever color you want be be creative be um it, it's it's your creative outlet do what you want my hair <sighs> um do what you want don't 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 stay in a box because staying in a box it's you you don't challenge yourself then you don't think like um yeah, just because a designer says I stitched the model on this count and this fabric does not mean you have to. I often change the fabric from patterns that I stitch that aren't my designs. Um, as I said, 32 counts my go-to and um, sometimes the pattern calls for 24 count or 28 count I mean. <laughs> I was thinking 14. Um, but yeah, it, do what you want. Do, do what you think is going to suit your style. Do what's going to suit your home decor. It's going to be hanging in your house. It's It's got to go. It's got to go with everything else. Um, if you've got an eclectic style, go. Do it. If you want to stitch on hand-dyed um, fabric, do it. I don't usually because it's harder to source sometimes, but there will be the rare occasion that I do. Um, uh... Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of Zweigart fabric. Um, it's easy to source. I like their colors. Um, their uh, vintage country mocha is probably my favorite. Uh, I also like their, I think it's Stormy Clouds. It's also uh, marbled like the vintage country mocha, but it's in gray. Um, I like the neutral tones just because the colors um, pop more on them and you can use white and the white will stand out a bit more on them. Uh, some designs that I do do require to be stitched on white and if they do require to be stitched on a certain fabric I will let you know um, like the uh, rainbow mandalas they look great on white or black any other color it's the some colors get lost then you don't get the same um, visual effect um, but the colors really do pop on the white or black and um, but I do use a lot of white in my designs and I, I know my, my dad's like oh uh, yeah <laughs> he's like designers but the white is effective another project we've been working on um, my sister-in-law she her name's Erin and some of you may have noticed a new section on the website Erin Elizabeth designs so she is my sister-in-law she's married to my brother and uh, she's very artsy and craftsy as well which is awesome um, we decided that we would take her artwork and turn it into cross stitch. This is one of Erin's designs that my dad stitched up. So have a zest for life. It's a gorgeous design. It's very subtle with the lemons, but it, it just, yeah, I love it. Like, look at the shading and the lemon there, if you can. Got little drops of lemon juice. It's a cute summer design without being too in your face. The one thing I like about Design for Erin is that she forces me out of my comfort zone of the colors that I normally pick. Um, we also are trying different techniques and uh, trying to get a different style going. 
um, something that makes her design stand out for my designs, but they complement each other when they are displayed together. Um, again, the designs don't use a lot of uh, quarter stitches or back stitching. Um, I try not to shade the same way, but it's really hard not to. Um, I find sometimes designs can be really flat without shading, and shading just brings a piece to life for me. Um, it's really hard not to use beads on her designs, or Krynik, or, uh, yeah, I try to keep them pretty, um, what you call it? I try to keep them very true to the original artwork, but, um, sometimes it's hard to paint on the scale, so I have to do a little bit of finicky work, but it's, it's a lot of fun working with her. I'll wake up and she'll have sent five text messages with new artwork for me. So I have a lot of her work to be charting and um, we're building up the library and she's having a lot of fun doing it. Um, I really enjoy working with her. She's a sweetheart. Um, this design is also by Erin. It's not completely finished yet. I have to go put the French knots in the back stitching in for the happy. And there are French knots in the banner. I'm gonna focus. But this is called Esther. Oh, I gotta do the front the back stitching for the whiskers and all that too. Geez, Dad. But she was really popular this Easter. And as I said, it's in Erin Elizabeth Designs. And we collaborate together on it. I'm really happy with how the shading turned out on the bunny. She's adorable. But, yeah. And again, you got the teal in there. But did use some different colors as I'm not used to using. That you don't normally see in my designs, but... As I said, Erin's helping me go out of my comfort zone a bit. Thank you for joining me, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like button, and uh, make sure you get the notifications for new videos. I don't know how frequently I'll be doing the videos. Um, I'm aiming for once a month, but it's hard to say because uh, I am pretty busy. I've got all these ideas going on in my head, and I'm really excited to share them with you. Uh, don't forget to join my Facebook group because that's where I post a lot of new d designs and um, sneak peeks and updates and it it's a fun community to be a part of. Um, it's pretty active and uh, the stitchers there are very helpful. If I'm not around they can answer your questions. Um, everybody is uh, very nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And my dad's in the group. <laughs> he he uh, he picked up model stitching uh, back in 2020, and uh, he's been a great help, and I hope to do a, um, a model parade in a couple weeks of all the designs he stitched, but I have to iron some things and finish up some French knots and back stitching that he didn't do. <laughs> uh, he also doesn't do beads, so I gotta do some beading. Um, my mom also model stitches, and uh, she does more of the bigger designs with the beads and um, she's done winter snowfall in green and uh, she she starts she took over my winter snowfall too because uh, I kind of uh, <laughs> I kind of pushed off to the side and uh, she st stitched the majority of it after I did we tag team a lot on the stitching um, there's projects that we pass back and forth and we both work on it it's really sweet to think that both my mom and I worked on it. Um, as I said earlier, she stitches on 32 count too, so it's really easy for us to um, swap projects. And she taught me how to stitch her way, so all of our cross stitches cross the same way. And um, our tension's very similar. You can't really tell who stitched what. And uh, sometimes that's the only way for me to get some designs done. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really enjoy cross-stitching, and I'm so thankful for everybody's support and positive uh, feedback on my designs, and it's it, it's still mind-boggling what, um, just the community itself. Everyone is so 
um, welcoming and yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see what the next eight years have in store. Um, I hope to still be around and yeah, I'm excited to show you all what what's next. So thank you again for, jo for joining me here and I hope you have a great week and month and um, look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Bye!